Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to discuss how I had one of the funnest sessions I've had in a while just yesterday playing a super loose and aggressive style. The show notes page for today, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 431. Go there for notes on these aggressive strategies that I'm about to discuss. So on the screen right now, you can see my poker tracker for for yesterday. I only played 340 hands. It was about an hour session, hour or so. Up a few dollars right here, positive 37.53 big blinds per 100 hands. But here's some of the fun stuff. I ran a 28 26 game, very loose and aggressive, raising first in 35% of the time, raised over limpers as, as often as I could at 13%, three bet at 18%, three bet steal, which means I'm three betting uh, in the blinds versus a steal, so a cutoff, a button, or a small blind open raise, three betting there 19% of the time. Absolutely loving these loose and aggressive stats. Um, let's see here. C-betting of the flop at 78, double barreling at 55% right there. And so it was a really good, really fun, aggressive session. Now, the reason why I uh, I decided to play loose and aggressive like this yesterday was because I just wanted to have fun. I had an hour to kill before the kids got home from school, and I didn't want to play like my standard tight aggressive kind of game. Wanted to mix things up a bit, right? So played just a fun session. Now, Sometimes you might want to try this, especially if you are like a loose passive player or a very nitty player. You just want to try something new, experiment with some loose aggressive play. Or maybe you're even on a poker downswing and your normal game just isn't working out for you. Or you're just in a basic poker funk, like poker is just not fun for you right now. Playing one of these loose and aggressive sessions can really help you out. All right, so let me give you some general strategies for these fun, loose, and aggressive sessions. The first thing is drop down in stakes as necessary. So if putting extra chips at risk with aggression is kind of like detrimental to your mental game, right? Like it's really tough at 25 NL. It might be tough for you. Nine big blinds is $2.25 for a three bet. C betting three quarter pot could easily be uh, uh, eight big blinds or two full dollars, right? Just depending on the situations and everything. If you are a little bit concerned about the money at risk, drop down to 10 NL, 5 NL, even 2 NL if you want. Before you start your session, and this is what I did yesterday, I had a pre-session attitude of let's get aggro. My goal in the session was to see how often I can raise first in. Keep that gap between VPIP and PFR very close. As you can see, I ended up with a 28, 26, only a 2% gap. I was calling two bets a total of only 6% of the time. No limps, of course, because I just don't limp. I like to ISO raise limpers instead. But like, like I said, I had that attitude of let's get aggressive and it really helped me to stay aggressive through the entire session. Now, Play in position as much as possible. It's so much easier to three bet your opponents from in position, to ISO raise limpers from in positions, to C bet when they check to you in position. Also, of course, because you're being more aggressive, the fact that you're in position, a lot of your opponents realize, well, he's raising me right now, or he's C betting. If I call right now, I'm going to be out of position two more streets, and I really don't want to do that. That positional advantage that you have can often convince players who are kind of on the fence of, as to whether or not to continue. Just you being in position gets them to fold more often. A big thing about this, when you sense weakness, you've got to attack. When you see small bets, players check out a position, you think the board doesn't interact well with their pre-flop range, whatever weakness that you sense, pounce on that. And as a good general strategy for aggression, bet when they check and also raise versus small C bets. And we'll see some examples of, of these basic strategies uh, in this podcast, in this video here. All right, so let's talk about getting aggressive pre-flop. The first bit of strategy here is to open anything playable. You can see in this hand, I'm on the button with just a jack and a three suited. It folds to me. I do my standard min open raise. This is my standard sizing right now from the button when it folds to me. And we get one caller out of the small blind. You can see this player is a 50 slash 14. What a great player to be in position um, uh, in a two bet pot with. I do just have the jack three suited like I said, not the best hand in the world, but I love it when weak players are against me, right? And look at, this is great. 
The big blind player decided to call as well. He's a 24-24 with a 3-bet at 13% or 1 out of 8. He has shown aggressive tendencies in the past, but he's just calling for one more big blind. He probably doesn't have the top of his range. He probably doesn't even have like a top 10% hand, right? He just has something that he thinks is worth calling to see the flop for one additional big blind. The flop comes down ace, 6-6 six, six with two clubs. I have the jack-3 of clubs, so I've got the flush draw. Villain 15 makes a small one big blind donk bet, or in the small blind he does. The big blind decides to fold. I have the flush draw. What do you think I should do here? Yeah, exactly. Like I said, bet when they check and raise versus small bets. Remember, when you sense weakness, go ahead and attack. I think this is a very weak hand. He made it one into six. I raise him to six big blinds with my flush draw, kind of repping that ace as well, right? He has all the reason in the world to fold right now, but he decides to call. The flush comes, I'm sorry, the turn comes a nine of clubs, giving me a flush. The board is ace, six, six, nine with three clubs. He bets one big blind again, and I say, oh, <laughs> whatever, buddy. I raise him to 18 big blinds in the 18 big blind pot. Basically, he donked one, I made it pot, he called on the flop. I'm trying to do the same thing here on the turn, trying to get max value with my flush, uh, and he ends up folding, which is a shame, but I still want a decent pot with that hand. Now, the next strategy is to isolate the weak players. So you can see here, I'm in the cutoff with nine, eight offsuit. A couple of folds, I decide to open raise. Now, nine, eight offsuit, it's not generally one of the best hands. It's an offsuit connector, but I'm in the cutoff and normally these kinds of hands, I'm just folding. But let's take a look at the players that are still left to act. On the button is an 11-11 who folds to steals 100% of the time. He's probably going to fold versus my open raise and give me the best position through the rest of the hand. The small blind, it's only seven hands on him, but he's a 14-14 player who's folded to steals two out of two times. I think he's going to fold. Probably the button and the small blind are going to fold, leaving the big blind heads up just to me. He's a 56 slash 31 player who has called 80% of the time, four out of five times right here. Plus he folds on the flop 50%. I would really, I'd be totally happy um, isolating this weak player out of the big blind. And everyone just folds. And that's one of the great things about playing this loose and aggressive game. You could see I'm a 25-25 with a three bet at 10% so far um, in this session. If you look at my smart HUD right here on the screen. Um, when you're being loose and aggressive, you're the one putting the raises, putting the bets out there. You give your opportunity or you give your opponents the opportunity to fold. And hey, all three players gave it up to me with a simple 9-8 offsuit. I won 1.4 big blinds. Now, another strategy, this is a critical strategy when it comes to playing aggressive poker. You want a three bet versus any player who raises first in greater than 20% of the time. When somebody raises first in 20, 25, 40% of the time, they have a really wide range and it's tough to defend against your three bet. So in this hand, I have five, uh, five six suited. The small blind open raises. He's a 36 slash 29. He's under the gun, makes it three big blinds. Um, but I guarantee this player so far, his raise first in is 50%, four out of eight. I'm not going to put him on a 50% range right here, but it's definitely wider than 20% range guaranteed. So the MP folds. It's to me uh, in the cutoff with six, five suited. I decide to three bet right here. You can see I lost a prior hand. I'm at 65 big blinds. So I have kind of a shorter stack, but making this nine big blind three bet, the goal here is just send the message. I like my hand. I'm willing to commit nine. I have 56 big blinds behind. And interestingly enough, a, a fishy button player, 47 slash 13, decides to call. Cold calling out of the button. What a weak play, weak player. Uh, small blind, big blind fold. And the original open raising villain in the under the gun decides to call. So we're three way to the flop, three bet pot, 28 big blind pot. And then look what happens. King five, six. I hit two pair with my six, five suited. No backdoor flush draw or anything, but at least I have two pair. Now, this is one of the great things about three betting, basically just picking your, your villain to three bet, but having a kind of hand that can really surprise players. They don't expect you to three bet with five, six suited. I hit two pair on this board, king, five, six. I'm hoping one of them has ace, king, or king, queen. 
to be calling my three bet. So the flop is 28 big blinds. I think I went a little big here with my two pair. I made it 20 big blinds. I was just trying to extract max value, made it roughly 30, I'm sorry, 75% pot right here. Um, I just made it too big and they both folded. But if one of them had ace king or king queen, I guarantee they would have probably come over the top or at a minimum called and I could have stacked one of these two players. Now, the last preflop play I want to talk about is three bet squeezing. You're still going to be looking for anybody who raises first in greater than 20%, but you got to remember in a squeezing situation, which we're about to see, uh, the fact that there is a caller really puts that pressure on that original open raiser. So in this uh, hand, I'm on the um, in the big blind with 10, nine suited of clubs. The cutoff decides to open raise. Uh, he's a 47 slash 26. He's folded to three bets one out of one times so far. A good player just in general to be three bet bluffing against, right? Raises a ton, capable of folding versus a three bet. And now right here, the button player. This is great. The button is a 22 slash 17 with a three bet at 10%. Looking tight aggressive slash loose aggressive. Like this looks like a strong, capable player, but he's just calling very likely he does not have the tippy top of his range. The small blind decides to fold. Once again, I have 10, nine suited. Um, and I decide, hey, it's time to three bet squeeze. Boom, I make it 12 big blinds, um, putting maximum pressure on the wide range cutoff who decides to fold. And the button decides to fold as well because I made it a size where I'm just kind of sending the message, message that I love my hand. I've got maximum strength right here and it worked. And one of the important strategies when it comes to playing loose and aggressive poker is to really restrict calling in the blinds, even with hands that seem like a great call. If you think that he can find a fold, that open raising opponent, go ahead and make the three bet. Stick it back in their face. Don't necessarily just call to try to see the flop with whatever hand it might be. You can see from my session Yesterday, when it comes to calling pre-flop two bets, out of the big blind, I called three times. Out of the small blind, I called three times as well. But when it comes to three betting, out of the big blind, I three bet six times. And out of the small blind, I three bet four times. So 10 times three betting, six times calling, I was playing a more aggressive game out of the blinds. Now, here's another good example of just playing some aggressive poker. I have pocket eights in the big blind. Everybody folds to the small blind who open raises. Now, of course, pocket eights, totally fine to call out of the big blind and see the flop try to hit a set and go for value, right? But like I said, if you reason to yourself that he can find a fold and look at this player in the small blind, he's an 18 slash 15, definitely tight aggressive, raises first in 29%, only calls 6% of the time. Yeah, tight aggressive player does not, does not like calling. And here's an important thing. He's out of position against me in the small blind. He's folded to three bets three out of three times. He open raised to three. I came into nine big blinds. Boom, he folded. And what a lot of players will also say is, man, if I'm playing a loose aggressive style, they'll never believe me and they won't fold. But they will fold, especially tight aggressive players like this, if you tackle them with aggression. Look it. I'm showing, or I'm running a 29-29 game. I've three bet at 19%, three out of 16 times. I guarantee this player is using a HUD. He sees these numbers. He really should be fighting back right now. But here's a great thing about playing this loose and aggressive style. My fold to steal so far was 100% this session, six out of six. My folding big blind versus a small blind open was one out of one. So because I'm not doing a ton of calling out of the blinds, when I show aggression like this, it really means something to him. He believes that I have a good hand, even though I have been three betting a lot, just because it's against the tendency I've shown of folding in the blind. So that's one thing you can take advantage of. Fold more often versus steals when it's not a good spot to call or three bet, and then your three bet bluffs are going to be well, slightly more successful. All right, so let's talk about some post-flop aggression that you should be using in your loose aggressive sessions. Of course, you want to see bet bluff a lot. You saw my C bet bluffing on the flop was like 76%. On the turn was 55-ish, somewhere around there. But yeah, continue to put that pressure on your pre-flop calling opponents. So we have a nice hand right here, 8-7 offsuit. 
the cutoff folds, I decide to open raise. I'm running a 32-29 game at this point. Now, villain 34 right here in the small blind, he's a 23 slash 15, looking tight and aggressive, but he folds to steals two out of two times. Loving that right there. He decides to fold. He just exits the hand. Now, villain two, who I do not have a HUD against, this is his very first hand at the table, but still, I'm open raising. I don't need a big history on a, on a player just to try to steal their blinds, right? Me making this steal and his reaction to it is going to start to teach me about this player. He decides to just call for one more big blind, probably does not have the top of his range, right? The flop comes down king, jack, three with two diamonds. I have the eight, seven with one diamond. He checks. And of course, I got a C-bet, make it exactly half pot, 2.2 into 4.4. And boom, he folds. Even though I made it such a small amount, I guarantee on a board like this, king, jack, three, um, Without any strong diamonds, he's folding. Without a pair of kings or a jack, so most ace high, queen high, ten high kind of hands. Under pairs, six, seven, seven, eight suited if he has my same hand but suited. All of those are folding here without a good diamond draw, right? So much of his range is folding. What a simple spot to be making that C-bet bluff. You have to be making these. Don't just see, oh crap, there's a king and a jack. He called preflop. He probably has a ton of uh, uh, Broadway hands. Go ahead and throw out that first C-bet bluff. Start developing a C-betting and open raising history against this player so you can make a more informed decision or decisions as the session progresses. Another important strategy Bluff raise when they bet small post flop, especially versus those donk bets. Now, I don't necessarily want you to just bluff raise willy nilly with no equity. You don't really want to bluff raise like a 6 5 on an ace king jack kind of a board, right? When he donk bets one big blind. You want to have some kind of backdoor, some kind of draw potential when you are bluff raising. Um, unless you know they donk and then fold a lot, you know, that's fine to be doing. But let's see this hand here. We've got Ace King, the under the gun. He only has a 50 big blind stack to start. He's a 52 slash 29 player. MP folds. And then kind of an unknown player, uh, but he does have a short stack at just 60 big blinds in the cutoff. He decides to call. So this is another three bet squeezing opportunity. I do have the Ace King offsuit. Uh, there's no way I would ever just call behind here. And I'm definitely not folding. Three betting is the play right? So I decide to three bet right here. And of course, when you're three betting, you always want to make it a size that says, I have a hand, you guys should get the F out of the hand. But of course, I mean, ace king, if these guys can call with ace queen, ace jack, ace five suited, hey, I'm getting theoretical value against them. So I made it 12, small blind, big blind folds. The original EP player decides to call. Um, uh, after open raising to three big blinds and the first caller decides to fold. So we're heads up. I've got ace king in position, 28 big blind pot on the flop. Ooh, and the flop comes a jack seven deuce rainbow. What an ugly flop. Actually, the way I look at a flop like this, it is beautiful for bluffing. Jack seven deuce, there's no open enders possible. There's gut shots with eight, nine, and nine, 10, but no great pairs either. No great draws, no flush draw, only backdoor flush draws. This is a lovely board to be bluffing on. And then look what happens. The pot was 28 big blinds. He donk bets two big blinds. What a weak blocking bet right here. So what do I decide to do? I decide to shove. Now, you could say, Sky, that's crazy. You're shoving 141 big blinds. This is only a 30 big blind pot. Well, yes, that just looking at the size looks crazy. But I want to put max pressure on him. And you got to remember also, he only has 37 big blinds behind. So my shove, I'm not risking 141. He only has 37, and I'm trying to put maximum pressure. There's no other size that I can really make it to put pressure on his two big blinds. He only has 37 behind. If I make it... 10 big blinds. If I 5x his bet, he only has to call eight more to try to win a pot. If I made it 10 right here, that pot would be near 50 big blinds. No, no, no. He's definitely going to call. The only way I can get him to fold is by shoving. Um, now, if he ends up calling and he has a king jack or queen jack for a top pair hand, well, I still have ace king. I still got outs against him, right? But he ends up folding. I'm basically tackling his small bet. I'm sensing weakness and I'm firing on all cylinders against this player.
All right, a big thing about these loose and aggressive sessions, and I should have mentioned this earlier, you are not getting loose and aggressive willy-nilly. You're not just three-betting anything, not open raising just anything. You are playing the player. You're looking for ways that you can exploit each player in an aggressive style. So let's look at a couple of hands right here. One of the plays that I do like making is I call when I'm in position versus a wide raise first in player with a plan to steal the pot later on. Now, here's the thing. I've got uh, pocket threes on this hand. I'm on the button. Under the gun, folds. MP decides to open raise. Now, he's a 14 slash 10 tight aggressive player. I haven't seen him make any C bets yet, or actually I should say he hasn't had opportunities to C bet. So his C bet is at zero out of zero chances right here, right? But I know just from my own experience of being a tag player and exploiting tag players, because he's tight aggressive, there's a good chance if he misses that flop, I am going to be able to bet when he checks on the flop. Now, my pocket three is definitely good enough to call just to set mine. So I call, I could have three bet against him, but he hasn't folded a three bets before. And he's open raising in the MP, tight aggressive player. Probably has a tight range, not a good chance he's folding right here. So I decide to call just to set mine, but to bet when he checks the flop as well. Small blind folds, the big blind, a 46 slash 24 player decides to call. So we're three way to a 9.4 big blind flop and I have pocket threes. Flop comes down. Oh, everyone's favorite. Eight, seven, three. I hit a set. Two diamonds on the board. So flush draws are available. Over cards, of course, for both of these opponents are possible. The small blind villain checks. The original open raiser decides to c-bet at just three big blinds. What a miserable little uh, 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 c-bet right here. Feels like total weakness, but I'm hoping he has an overpair. He doesn't want to fold. He has a couple of diamonds, ace, queen, ace, jack, king, ten of diamonds that he doesn't want to fold. I decide to raise for value. He made it three. I made it eight big blinds. And I was hoping like this villain two, loose aggressive out of the big blind can re-raise. He's a 46 slash 24 player. Just hoping for some, for some crazy aggression out of one of these two players. And then the big blind decides to just call. And the small blind, holy cow, loving this. Not the small blind, I'm sorry. The original open raiser, tight aggressive player. He decides to shove his remaining 97 big blind stack. I've got bottom set. I mean, the only thing I'm scared of, I guess, is uh, pocket eights or pocket sevens to for a set over set situation. There's no way I'm folding. I reshove on him, right? And then the big blind player, darn, he just folds. But I've got bottom set on kind of a wet board against a tight aggressive player. Uh, 211 big blind pot. The turn comes a 10 and the river comes an eight, making the board eight, eight, 10, seven, three, I have a set of threes or river to full house against this player. And he turns over pocket jacks. The way he played it makes absolute sense. But he was just, maybe he was just thinking I was raising on a flush draw. But that's one of the reasons why you want to tackle these tight aggressive players with playable hands, but also play with them in position. You could imagine if he had ace queen, he would have easily just um, uh, made that tiny bet right there, right? And he might have been able to call on the flop as well against my eight big blind race. I was just getting value out of this player. Absolutely love this hand. Calling with a plan and then end up stacking the my opponent with a set. Now, another play that I made yesterday, absolutely love, you call in the blinds. Remember, I said before, um, uh, restrict your calling in the blinds. But it's totally fine if you call with a plan to exploit your opponent. So in this one, call in the blinds, you can use check raises and donk bets to try to try and steal the pot. So under the gun, um, uh, decides to limp in. He's a 53 slash 18. Everyone else folds and it comes to me. Now, this isn't a call, but with 7-9 suited, there's a good chance I would have called right here because this player, his c-bet is zero out of three. If he would have open raised to just two or three, I would have just called. With the plan of, I'm going to check, and if he checks behind, I'm going to fire that turn to steal it. But it's a limped pot. I check in the big blind. 7-9 um, suited of hearts. The flop comes down, jack, 10, deuce. Um, so I have the gut shot under gut shot, plus the backdoor flush draw. 
I check. He makes it one big blind. I totally sense weakness right now. I decide to check raise. I make it four big blinds. Maybe I should have gone one or two big blinds more, but I'm like, I, I like this. It's 4x his bet. The pot was only 2.4 big blinds before he donk bet. Oh, drat. He decides to call. That's okay. A heart gives me a flush draw. An eight gives me a straight. A nine or a seven gives me a little bit of a showdown equity there. So there's a lot of cards I like on the turn. The turn comes the nine of spades, giving me third pair. The board is jack, 10, nine, deuce, and I have the seven, nine. So I check, and then he checks behind. And the reason why I checked instead of double barreling is because I figured, wait a second, this guy's a super fish. He called my raise on the flop on the jack, 10, deuce. There's no way he's folding on a nine. He connected somehow with the jack and the 10, the nine, works with the jack and the 10 as well. Um, I think he has a better hand than me at this point. I wasn't going to try to bluff a fish when he's just unbluffable in this spot. So I check. He checks behind. Good deal. I think he doesn't have a strong hand now, but then the ace hits and it, it would make sense from a fishy player to donk and then call with a ton of different ace X hands. So I check. He checks behind. I guess I could have gotten him to fold on that ace potentially, but I show the 7-9, and he shows a 10-5 suited. He limped under the gun with 10-5 suited, flopped a second pair, donk bet, and then called my race. I really think he would have called on that turn as well. But I still like my play of check raising when I sense that weakness because I had a lot of uh, equity, a lot of cards that could help me on that turn. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. If so, please leave a thumbs up down below. And of course, I got to end every single video, every single podcast with a simple take action, baby. Play your own loose and aggressive session right now. Start the session with that attitude that you're going to get aggressive. You're going to sock it to your opponents at every positive EV opportunity. And of course, good luck to you.